Hi, I'm Donna Jordan from Jordan Fabrics. Today I'm going to show you how to make a maple leaf table runner. Now, you may have seen me make a similar runner before. We did a video, but I was only able to make that because I made a quilt and had some scraps left over. We've had a lot of requests for people from people saying, show us how to make the runner from scratch, from yardage. So that's what we're going to do today. Now, this is a free pattern. This is a pattern I wrote, and I'm going to show you where to find these on the website. Anywhere on our website, we've got a section called free patterns. So click on that. And this one right here, that's the pattern. Just click on it and then you can download it. You can put it, leave it on your computer. You can print it. And this way you can follow right along as we're making the runner. Here's what we need for the pattern. We need five fat quarters. We need a yard of background a third of a yard for the border, some binding and backing. Now the fat quarters, those are gonna be our leaves and they're also gonna make this nice fancy border. So you want a variety of colors, hopefully in leafy prints. I'm gonna use batiks. We have some really nice leafy prints here and I'm gonna to try to get different colors. That one will be real nice. So I'm gonna get five that are slightly different. I think I'll use these and maybe this one. I'm gonna use this for my border. It's a nice deep green. And I'm gonna use this for the background. So grab your fabrics, get your pattern, and let's get started. First step is to get everything cut off the bolt. And then we wanna get it ironed, steam pressed, nice and flat. So let's start with the fat quarters. I'm gonna take half yards off the bolt and then I'm going to split those. Now that everything's ironed up, we're going to cut. And every fat quarter gets cut exactly the same way. So I'm gonna cut all five of the fabrics at the same time because I'm comfortable cutting five layers. If you like to cut less, then only do a few at a time. Be sure to double check the pattern as you cut to make sure you have the correct sizes. There's nothing worse than cutting it wrong and thinking you don't have enough fabric. Now this particular pattern, there's a little bit of extra built in, but you do wanna double check your numbers. Everything is all cut out now. So these pieces here are going to be for the, the pieced border. So we're gonna do those later on. These are all for the leaf block. So the pattern is gonna have me pull off exactly what we need for one block. So we're gonna need one stem, and we're gonna need a couple of these pieces, a couple of these, a couple of these. So just follow the pattern, it'll tell you exactly what you need, and you can pull off the pieces for one block. Here's everything for that one block, and the first step is to take one of these smaller squares and we're going to cut it in half right along the diagonal. This is going to be the block we're going to use for the stem. So this is going to go in the middle here. So I'm gonna to wanna to mark the very middle of these blocks so that I can line everything up. So you can either make a little finger press with your nail or you can do a little pencil mark there, just a little teeny mark so that you can line up that with the middle of this guy. Now we're going to match up these lines and I'm going to just stitch a quarter inch away from the edge here. Now I'm going to do a little bit of finger pressing and I want that seam to go towards the stem, away from the light towards the dark. Now we're gonna match up the marks here and sew the other side on. Now we'll iron it. Little steam is good. It looks very cool from the back and all we have to do is trim off the excess stem. Next step is to draw a line on the back of these two squares. I like to use a pencil. You can use a chalk pen if you like, but a nice sharp pencil works really well. Now we're gonna make half square triangles with these guys. So 
stitch one quarter inch away from the line on both sides. So we're going to go down one side. And then I'm just going to turn it around and go down the other side. So I'm one quarter inch away. Now we're going to cut right along that line that we drew earlier. Now we want to iron these with the fabric, with the seam allowances towards the dark side. So I like to put the light part on the table, open it up, and kind of finger press it, make sure it's everything's in place, then use my iron. Now we have all the pieces we need to make the first leaf block. So we've got our stem and a plain corner. And these guys are going to go here and here. It's kind of like doing a jigsaw puzzle. And here. And then our half square triangles. One here, one here, one here, and one here. Now it's just a nine patch. Everything's the same size. We're just going to sew everything together. So I'm just going to make each row separately and then stitch the rows together. Now you'll notice I did not trim off my dog ears here. And if you forget to do that, like I did, it's okay because when you trim this off the machine, you can just do this right here. Now that the rows are sewn together, we're going to want to alternate the way the seam allowances are laying. So these are going to go that way. I'm going to lay these ones to the right, and then the top row again is going to go to the left. So I'm finger pressing. I'm just pressing that seam the way I want it to go with my fingernails. And you can just use the pad of your finger if you want, but that will hold it enough so that we can sew the row together now and have them all nesting. See, they're alternating there. This block is all done, so make your other four blocks and then we'll get started on the borders. Now we're going to work with the pieces we set aside for the pieced border. So these bigger pieces here are all going to be half square triangles. So we're going to mark on the back of the squares and then take them over to the sewing machine. Now that I have all my half square triangles done, I'm just going to use the pattern and I am going to lay these out so they look just like this border here. So you have to spin them around a little bit and it doesn't really matter what color goes where. You want to make sure you have a nice blend. So I'm going to show you what it looks like here. I've got a whole lot of them laid out here. So this is almost the whole border. So now you can see that nice chevron or zigzag effect. So make your whole border, then you make another one that's going to go on the top, the two side ones, then we're going to end with a plain border, quilt it up, bind it, and it'll be all done. I just love how this runner turned out. I know I made it, but sometimes your projects just make you happy. Look at the nice leaves. It's 60 inches long, and if you look at it on a table, it would really look nice. I can't wait for Thanksgiving so I can put my pie on it. Now you could hang this up as a wall hanging. You can put it on a coffee table. You can put it on your dinner table. And that border, I just love the way it frames those leaves. And it's so easy to make. It looks really complicated, but it's really, really fun. So I quilted it in a fairly small pattern called chestnut swirls. And you can see the pattern on the back a little. I might flip this runner over once in a while, but I kind of doubt it because this side looks so good. Thanks for watching our tutorial today on how to make the maple leaf runner. We hope you enjoyed it. Now we're going to have another giveaway. We're going to give away this carousel quilt. This is a mini quilt. It can also be used as a table runner. And it's got all these lovely pieces in fall colors. The giveaways are very easy to enter. Just follow the link below that says giveaway. Enter your email address and your name. And remember, we can ship this worldwide, so you might be the lucky winner. Happy quilting.